Oh, hello everyone. Welcome to VISP Solutions. So before starting with today's session, let's quickly revise the topics which we have already covered in last session. So we have seen first suspense account. So about suspense account, we have discussed that while creating a ledger, a primary ledger and specifying ledger options, there you can give your default suspense account for usage. But besides this default suspense account, if you want to use any uh, suspense account, particularly for uh, specific journal source or category, you can create additional suspense account as well by following this task here. Then uh, we have discussed about the summary account. This summary account uses the summary templates to create summary accounts. And uh, what it is basically used for is for the speed processing of financial reports, mass allocation and recurring journal formulas. So we have uh, seen summary account. Then after summary accounts, we have talked about the encumbrance. Encumbrance are the legal liability and it is like your encumbrance is to record a pre-expenditure commonly known as encumbrance. Fine, so it helps us to classify and track expenditure according to the purchasing approval process. So we have seen there are various encumbrance type, uh, which is predefined like commitment, obligation, and if you want, you can create a new encumbrance type as well according to your requirement. Then we have talked about the account combination so account combination is like when you create a chart of account it is recommended to enable a checkbox of allow dynamic insertion so that you can create a accounting combination various kind of accounting combination automatically but if you will not uh, allow this dynamic code combination you can also create manually various uh, accounting combinations fine so this was the task by using uh, which you can create accounting combination manually and we have seen some example of accounting combination as well here then after account combinations we have document sequence so we have discussed about the document sequence for uniquely renumbering the documents generated by Oracle uh, applications and there are various types of uh, numbering which you can give for your document sequencing is like automatic gapless manual. So we have seen this and after that we have also covered automatic posting criteria. So if you want a bulk posting or a batch posting so what you can do is you need to create auto post criteria set and define that criteria set to your ledger and then you can run the automatic posting for your journals. Then after uh, automatic posting criteria, we have seen security rules. So in security rules, it helps us to rest, uh, restrict the user to access to certain account segment values. Fine, so what uh, it helps is it it helps us to give a particular user with a particular responsibility that a person with that uh, responsibility does not have access to some account segment values. Fine, so if there is a user X with a responsibility Y and if you want to restrict this person with responsibility Y to have access to some of the account segment values, you can do that by using security rules concept here. Fine. Sorry, so this was a quick uh, review of what we have covered yesterday. <laughs> now we will cover today secondary ledger, concept of secondary ledger. So what is secondary ledger? A secondary ledger is an optional ledger linked to a primary ledger for the purpose of tracking alternative accounting. So 
So uh, secondary ledger is an optional ledger linked to a primary ledger for the purpose of tracking alternative accounting. So there is two questions for you like first, does your business require a chart of accounts which is different from your uh, chart of account which you have created in your primary ledger? And then second one is, does your business have a same calendar or a different calendar from your primary ledger? If the answer for both this question is yes, then you will need a secondary ledger. Which has all the functionality of primary ledger. Fine. So if you have a different charts of accounts and different calendar from your primary ledger, you can go for secondary ledger here. In a secondary ledger, you can have different charts of account, different calendar and a different currency. In addition, you may also define a reporting currency ledger that is directly connected to your secondary ledger. You may also use special subledger accounting rules to create journal with different rules than your primary ledger. So basically in crux, what is secondary ledger and how you can uh, figure out that you require a secondary ledger creation or not is like in primary ledger as we have discussed uh, we, uh, a lot like it comprises of four C's like charts of accounts, calendar, currencies, and accounting method convention. So this is primary ledger. So when there is a uh, change in any of the C's, like if there is change in chart of account, or is there is change in calendar, or if there is change in your accounting method convention, you can go for your secondary ledger. And if there is conversion, in currencies, you're using different currency than primary ledger, then there is a recommended to go for reporting currency or else you can go for secondary ledger. So basically in four C's, any of the C's uh, other than currency is changing, you can go for secondary ledger. And if currency is changing, you can go for reporting currency. So this was the basic difference between the primary and secondary led, uh, ledger that if you are using different chart of account or calendar or convention from your primary ledger, you can go for secondary ledger. Fine. And if only currency is changing, you can go for reporting currency. So now let's uh, go to the application and we will see how you can configure your secondary ledger. So basically there is nothing different between the primary ledger and secondary ledger configuration. Basically we need to follow all the steps which we have followed for primary ledger creation. Same for the secondary ledger. But now what we will do, we need to change one of the C's so that we can create a secondary ledger. So I'm going to make a new calendar. And by making that calendar, I will uh, prepare my secondary ledger. So, uh, Let's go to the application and first we will create one uh, calendar, a new calendar, and then which will be different from our primary ledger calendar, which we have linked. And then we will create a secondary ledger by using that calendar. Fine. So let's go to the application and make one calendar there, a new calendar. So first log in. After login, choose your responsibility. Go to setup, financials, calendar. First, as we have already seen how we can make a calendar is we need to first define a type. Then by using the type, you can create a accounting calendar. So first click on this type, a Java form will get downloaded. Just open it. So our period type window gets open here. Now we will create a period type with a name SL period type. Fine. And then period per year I'm taking 13, 12 months, one adjusting month. Year type I'm taking calendar only and description I'm giving here like for demo purpose as this calendar is for demo. So I'm just giving that only then save your work. You can save it from here or you can just press control and S 
and you can see after pressing a tolerance your your type and periods per period fields get raised here now after creating period type for creating accounting calendar go to setup financial calendar and first let me check my type which i have created is visible we have created with sl sl period type i'm let's copy this because i'm going to use data loader for making my accounting calendar so for making accounting calendar first we need to go to your navigation is same set up financial flex field and calendar and the calendar go to accounting now given name to your calendar i'm giving ebs sl cal calendar short name for calendar now if you want to add any description you can add then you can also enable a security as we have discussed that when you will enable this checkbox this assign access tab will get activated and you can just go to this tab and give a data access set for view modify or use for any particular user for any particular responsibility fine now just put your person in the first tab here in prefix now open your data loader I have already created and we have already covered uh, in our session previously that how you can create a calendar by using uh, data loader. So I'm not giving a, a very much deep insight or of the same. I'm just using the thing. Directly, so it is already created. I just need to change my period type. I've changed my period type. Rest information is fine. And we need to put our cursor for in first field, first row here. And in our Java form also, we should make sure it is coming and cursor is coming in the first field here. Fine. After ensuring that, go to your data loader and just Make sure your window and your command group is right. And then just start your upload. Say OK. And just see everything is going smoothly or not. You just need to sit and see that it is loading the data properly for each and every month. So you can see our data loader has loaded our calendar successfully. Just say OK. Minimize it and here just 
enable this adjusting for your adjusted month and save your calendar for use. And you will say you can see period type will get it will get freezed here. Now we have made our EBS. SL calendar and we are going to use this calendar only for our secondary ledger. So in our primary ledger, we have used another calendar and as our calendar is changing now, we are using our secondary ledger for the same. Now for the defining secondary ledger. You need to go to. So you can also check your request is successfully done. Go to view request. Find. You can see calendar validation completed normally. Now for secondary ledger creation, you need to go to under setup. You need to go to accounting setup manager. And accounting setup. Now just search for. Your EBS. Ledger. This is our primary ledger, EBS primary ledger. Update this. You can see we have done here our primary ledger. Now we are going to create a secondary ledger by adding here. Add secondary ledger. Now you can see here the same type of tabs are coming here as we have seen in creation of primary ledger. So first we will give a name. EBS. SL. Fine. Then charts of account for our primary ledger. Also, we have used EBS structure and for our secondary ledger. Also, we are going to use the same charts of account. Accounting calendar. Will be different, which we have created just now. I'm going to use that. With EBS. So you can see this EBS calendar was the calendar which we have used for our primary ledger. Now we have we are using this EBS secondary SL calendar for our secondary ledger. Calendar is changing in our case. Now we will use currency same as our primary ledger USD. And giving the sub ledger contact method at standard accrual predefined one. Here it is standard accrual predefined by Oracle. Now here is data conversion level. There are three types of conversion, uh, four types of conversion level: balance, journal, subledger, and adjustment only. So as per the requirement, you can use a data conversion level. Now what conversion level uh, can be used at what time? Let's discuss the same quickly. So here is a data conversion level. So first is subledger, which we are going to use in our ca case as well. So in subledger, uh, when you can select a data conversion level as subledger, when you want a detailed tracking of your subledger transaction, if you want to pass some additional adjustment entry, or if you want to exclude certain journal source or categories, so you can go for subledger data conversion level. Then there is journal data conversion level. You can use this when you uh, not required a detailed tracking of subledger transaction, uh, subledger uh, sub transaction, and if you want to pass some additional adjustment entries, and if you want to exclude certain journal source and categories, so basically, uh, in subledger and journal, the two points are same of additional adjustment and exclusion of some journal source and category. The basic difference between the two is if you want a detailed tracking of subledger transaction, you can go for subledger, and if you don't want, you can go for journal data conversion level. Now the next two are balance and adjustment only. Balances can be used when you not require detailed tra tra uh, tracking of subledger transaction, and there is no additional adjustment entries required, and there is no exclusion. All journal need to be transferred, and you just want to see the balance under the different currency or different calendar. So you can go for the balance data conversion level, and there is adjustment only. So for adjustments only, you can go for this data conversion level. Basically. This adjustment only is uh, seen uh, very less. We can go for the other three uh, more frequently. Now let's go to our application and we have given subledger as our data conversion level here. After giving all this information, just apply.
Now here you can see the same setups apart from this primary to secondary ledger mapping are the same rest are the same which we have already covered and discussed in our primary ledger creation. So I will just quickly navigate back to you with all the setups uh, and we will uh, complete our secondary ledger creation side by side. So first of all, this the ledger option. So we have seen ledger options before also. So here ledger short name is coming. You can see currency charts of accounts and every detail is coming here. You can just see your calendar period type. First open period will be January 23. Number of futureable enterable periods is first. We have discussed this future enterable. You can just enter the transaction, which you cannot post the same. Then you can see your sub ledger accounting method here and journal entry language English America. Everything is fine. We just need to go to this next. And link your retained earnings account here. I'm quickly linking my retained earnings. Search we have not created. So create this code combination and select it. Yes, select. select. Fine. So we have linked our retained earnings account here. Then the rest will are same as we have seen in our primary ledger creation suspense account. If you want, you can tag rounding difference tracking account. If you want, you can. Uh, give your account here. If you want to enable intercompany balancing or enable journal approval or enable journal entry tax, you can enable from here. And for translation, you need to give your rate type and your CT account. Fine. So right now I'm just filling all the mandatory ones. Go to next. Here, journal reconciliation and budget controls, uh, configurations or setups are there. If you want, you can just use the option as per your requirement. Like if you want to enable journal reconciliation, enable budgetary control, you require budget journals. So basically, on your demand or your requirement, you can just uh, set up your uh, options, ledger options. Fine. Then I'm just going to next. So it will help us to review, give a review before creating your ledger options. That's what all configurations we have done and just finish it. So here. Now you can see EBS SL is displaying our secondary ledger name is displaying after completing the uh, ledger options configuration. Now next is primary to secondary ledger mapping. This is helpful to specify conversion option to transfer data from a primary ledger to its secondary ledger. So how data will get pushed? You can give here uh, journal conversion rules. Like if you want to post journal automatically from source ledger, you can go for yes. And if you don't want, you can go for no. By default, it is coming no. But if you want, you can select yes also. Basically, depends on the requirement. Then retain general creator from primary ledger. So when you're pushing your entry from primary ledger to secondary ledger, if you want to retain a, a journal entry by whom it is created, that who is the creator of journal entry, so you can just retain that also. By default, it is coming yes. I'm taking yes only. Now, here as we have discussed in uh, PPT, that data conversion, sub ledger. If you want, you can exclude certain journal source and categories. Fine. So here is that uh, field, journal source and category. Whatever source and category you want to transfer, you can select yes or no accordingly. Fine. So these are the different source and different category you can select, and you can just. Uh, make yes or no for the transfer journal to the secondary ledger here. So there is some option specifically for journal source and journal category. You can set up all this as your requirement. And just complete it. The next was the reporting currency. So it helps us to create reporting currency and update currency conversion and journal processing options. We have already discussed about the reporting currency in our primary ledger. So I'm just uh, quickly completing all the setups. You can add reporting currency from here, and we have also discussed what is currency conversion level. There are two journal and balance, and what uh, we can uh, give our currency name here. Sorry, reporting currency name here, short name. They should be unique. 
the name both for reporting and short name and then you can go for currency here and then translation options are also coming so if you want to create any reporting currency here you can just uh, go to this field and just give all the uh, information here accordingly so right now i'm not making any reporting currency i'm just completing this as it is the next setup is balancing segment value segment so we have also discussed about the balancing segment and what is the balancing segment value assignments so first you need to give to your legal entity which we have already covered while giving our um, primary ledger creating our primary ledger then we have also assigned balancing segment value segment for our pl now you, if you want you can assign in for uh, your secondary ledger as well so you need to just go to this update I hope you all. Uh, OK, so there is some error. I need to relog in. So I hope you all remember what are the steps which we have followed in creation of primary ledger and how we have discussed all the setups and completed it. So it, it will be a repetitive uh, job if I will explain each and everything detail uh, again. So I'm just quickly um, completing all the setups. And moving forward with our secondary ledger. So let me just change this. I hope the configurations are. Which we have done. I have not lost all the configuration, so let me just check it. OK, so fine. It is saved here. So the basically we were discussing about the balancing segment value segment. So if you want to assign balancing segment value to ledger, you can go here, add balancing segment value, go and you can add a balancing segment here if you want uh, in your secondary ledger also. So if you want, you can take. If you don't want, you can skip also. Let me take there. But if you will skip, it will be fine. There is no issue. Basically depends upon the requirement of the user and then complete it. Then we have discussed about the subledger accounting option in detail. What are the various options? Let's let me navigate to you. So you can see we have discussed about the uh, accounting options and system options. There are different application and for each application you can configure your accounting options and system options and system options we have seen. You need to give your processing uh, unit size and number of processor and in. And in accounting options, we have seen there are various uh, accounting options which you need to configure here, and there are accounting program defaults also, which we have discussed one by one uh, in detail. So this this is already covered while creation of primary ledger. So if you want, you can go through that session video. Then there is intercompany accounts. Fine. So if you want to set up intercompany accounts, you need to go to here. You can see a legal entity is coming. Just you need to give defined relationship if you want. And in here, if you want for particular segment, you can go for particular segment. But if you want for all, so you can go for all. I'm selecting here all. That this. Uh, this uh, uh, when I will define account, it will be available for all the segments. You can go for all. So in a similar manner, we have also configured intercompany account while creating primary ledger. I'm just repeating that then only here. The secondary, then you can go to define accounts. And give your receivable and payable account here. So we have done all this there also. Let's give company.
Okay, I think there is something. Okay, I'm giving the wrong code combination. Let me search. It will be 10. Then department. Then give account receivable. the company. This code combination is already created, just selected. And just the start date is coming correctly or not. Today's date is fine. And you need to add your payables account as well here for intercompany. So you can just go and add your. I think this code combination is. For payables. Yeah, correct. It is for payables. Start date is fine. And just after giving all this receivable and payable, just apply it, cancel it. So we have defined account for our intercompany. What is receivable and what is payable? And just give a status complete and done. So basically, in uh, creation of secondary ledger and primary ledger, the difference between the two is basically uh, any of the C's is changing and uh, the C's which are changing and which out of account calendar primarily or uh, there can be change in uh, accounting method convention. And if it is change in a currency only, then you can go for reporting currency. It is recommended to go for reporting currency rather than for secondary ledger and rest thing is same here. All the configuration is same. One additional configuration required is to uh, do the mapping of primary to secondary ledger. That's it. Otherwise, all the setups which we have covered in primary ledger is the same for secondary ledger. Now, as we have discussed, if you remember in intercompany account, if you want to give intra balancing rules also. So first you need to go to this. Um, update. Specify ledger options. Go to next and here. You can see enable intercompany balancing. So you can enable one more tab will get uh, activated under your setups and you need to give your uh, balancing rule for intra company. But I'm not using this, so I'm not enabling it. We have done here in our primary ledger. You can see intra company balancing rule. So we have defined our balance intra company balancing rule there, but I'm not defining for my secondary ledger now. Now I'm just going to sequencing. And in sequencing, we have this uh, discussed. Ledger name should be uh, correct one. Our EBS uh, SL is coming. Then what is sequence event which will trigger sequence event is the event which will trigger your sequencing. Sequencing entity is the same, and you can choose your sequencing contacts here, like GL period close or GL period close for sub ledger journal entry posting or accounting. As per the requirement, by default, GL period close GL journal entry is coming, and I'm taking that only. Then give the status as complete and apply. So you can see all the configuration under our SL secondary ledger has been completed by now. All the status is coming in green and completed. Now, the next thing, as we have discussed in our primary ledger, is to create a responsibility and give a responsibility to the user and define profile, then only you can use your ledger. So I'm just going to do that steps for my secondary ledger. So for that, into my Java form, we need to create a responsibility to go to the situ responsibility. Okay. I need to go back to return to accounting setup. And uh, let me again open my Java form. Close this. We need to go to switch responsibility and take system administrator responsibility. Say OK. Go to security. 
responsibility define give a name to your responsibility i am giving e ebs sl responsibility then application will be joanna ledger An application is general ledger, then give a responsibility key. I'm giving EP has underscore SL underscore responsibility RESP. Then, if you want to add description, you can add not mandatory. Effective date is coming today's date is fine. Then, we need to add a data group as discussed. We're going to use the standard data group for it. Then, give an application general ledger. Give a menu, menu is not thing, but the access you want to give to this responsibility and that is responsibility. What will be the access? The access will be GL super user. You can see here. Is a per user. Then request group. Request group I'm going to give GL concurrent program group. This is for your reporting purpose. And after creating a responsibility, just save it. So as you will freeze, your application responsibility will get freezed here uh, when you will save this. And now we will go to our users and the security. Go to define. Then search for the user. So we have searched our employee. Now we will add here uh, the responsibility which we have created. Just click on this row here under responsibility and click on this add icon to add a row and give your responsibility here which we have created. And save it. And close this. Now the next thing which we have seen in primary ledger also, it is just a repetitive of all the tasks which we have done for our primary ledger and just repeating all that tasks for us secondary ledger only. So that's why I'm very quick for my setups in secondary ledger as we have already discussed primary ledger in very detail. Now on the profile, go to system. Go to responsibility. So here it is EBS general responsibility, which we have created for a primary ledger. Now EBS SL responsibility I have created for my secondary ledger. I'm selecting that. Go to profile. GL. Data, GL data access set. Profile, find. And now here, define your primary or secondary ledger. ABS SL. Fine. And save it. Close it. Now the next thing which is uh, which we are going to see here importantly is to open a period for a secondary ledger. So for opening a period for a secondary ledger, first we need to go to switch hat for switching the responsibility. And you can see our EBS SL responsibility is visible here. Just select it. Now go to setup for opening the period for this SL or second relation and open and close. And find. And first period will be 1023. Say OK. Yes. Request ID is generated. 
go to this view and see the status of your request. Refresh it so that our period get open. Successfully. Status will come here. It's taking some time. Mm. It's taking a lot of time. Let me check. Close this form. Open and close again. Find. OK, you can see our period got open. First period is Jan and future interval is February 23, but I'm opening the next period also because we will create entry for this month February and we will post it. And if you are going to post in future level entry, it will not allow us. So let me open Feb month also. Go to open next period and yes. Again, you can go to view request. Find. OK, so it's pending. Let me just click on to refresh data and uh, Let's re-navigate towards our open and close period. Find. OK, so it's not completed. Let's wait for the process to get complete so that our five months get open. So refresh it. So it's got completed. Let's re navigate. So it's got open. Now we will try to create one entry by using the R secondary ledger. Go to journal, enter, new journal, test SL. Soundscape company. Sounds. Say okay. Give debit. Say ten dollars. Then second. Your second line. So I have already told you that as we have given company segment as a balancing segment, flex wheel. So that's why we have debited company 10 values. Segment value, so therefore for credit also 10 is coming. Give your credit amount. If you want to add description, you can add. Purpose. Okay. 
then after that, just post it. So just close it and requery. So it's not posted right now. Let me go to view, see the request. Find. So you can see it's got posted here. Completed normally. Let's close it. Go to enter. Close this. Requery. So you can see it got posted successfully. So in this manner, it is very easy. What we all the configurations you have done for your PL, same will be available for your SL also. Just you need to create a primary secondary uh, mapping there. And if there is any change in your three C's, that is calendar and charts of account primarily, then convention method, then you can go for secondary ledger. And if your currency is changing only, you can go for reporting currency as well. So uh, for reporting currency in instead of your secondary ledger. So we have seen all this and we have done all the configuration. We have uh, opened the period for SL also and we have posted it. So I have done this by entering a journal entry manually in my secondary ledger. But if you want to push your uh, journal entry from primary ledger to secondary ledger automatically, so how it can be done is going back to my PPT. So how does get, uh, how data gets pushed to secondary ledger is like if you are selecting data conversion level as a ledger, then for sub ledger transaction, when you run create accounting program and for journal ledger journals, when you will run journal ledger posting program at that time, uh, automatically from primary ledger to secondary ledger, your entry will get uh, posted there. From uh, when you will post in your, your primary ledger automatically, entry will get posted in your secondary ledger. If you will select journals, then for both sub ledger transaction and journal ledger journals, when you will run journal ledger posting program, it will get pushed to your secondary ledger from primary ledger. Then for balances, you need to run a consolidation program that only your PL will uh, from your PL data will push to secondary ledger. And for adjustment, you need to uh, if it is selected, then you need to maintain for adjustment only your data. And the, in this sub ledger accounting is designed in such a manner that data can be pull from primary to secondary ledger. So basically these are all the programs when you will run create accounting journal ledger posting program, then automatically from primary ledger to secondary ledger, your data will get pushed. And as you, uh, as we have also defined while giving our uh, specify ledger options in, sorry, not specify ledger option, uh, we have also defined in our primary secondary mapping. You can go and see. It post journal automatically from source ledger is yes. If you are given the here as yes, and when you are running all these programs which we have discussed here, like accounting program, posting program, then automatically uh, from source ledger, your journal will get posted to your secondary ledger as we have given yes also here, and we are running all this program. So this will fetch your data automatically from PL to SL. But I have created this entry by using manually are my secondary ledger journals. Fine, so this was the concept of secondary ledger in a whole. Now he, uh, there is one more small topic which I would like to cover is ledger sets. So ledger sets is like, uh, it's a group of ledger that shares the same charge of account and calendar or period type combination. And ledger sets allow you to run process and reports for multiple ledgers simultaneously. For example, you can open close period for multiple ledger at once, can run a recurring journal that update balance for multiple journal at once. You can run consolidation financial report that summarizes balance across multiple ledger and learn ledger set at once. So basically it will help us to group the ledgers which have the common charts of accounts and calendar or period type and can use that uh, that all sets of ledger in one go for multiple tasks like creating a, uh, creating reports, financial reports, and running recurring journals and all. Fine, so you can group all types of ledgers in a ledger set such as PL, secondary ledger, reporting currency, as long as they share the same charts of accounts and calendar or period type. 
and you can combine them as one. So what is the task where you can uh, do all this thing is you need to go to Java form and you need to go to your setup. Under setup, go to financials. Under financials, you need to go to leisure sets. Fine. Now you can see here what other uh, options here. You need to give the ledger set name. Description is not mandatory. Then as I have said, for creating ledger set, the ledgers which you are grouping here or combining together same, uh, should have same charts of counts or calendar or calendar type. That is period type. Fine. So you need to give a charts of count and calendar. Default ledger, it is not uh, a mandatory field. Then you can list out all the ledgers here or ledger set and can make a combination of the ledgers here. So let me just search for the ledger sets which we have already created here. So let's take example of this vision operation, which is already seeded here. So you can see here, ledger set name is given, description is given, you can see charts of account, calendar is given. So basically in this ledger, vision operation, USA, vision Brazil, SL, vision Germany, SL, the charts of accounts and calendar were in common. That's why for this whole list, which you can see here under the ledgers, is grouped together in one ledger set and you can use this ledger set commonly. So if you want to run a report, if you want to create any financial report, you can just uh, give a ledger set for it. You can use a ledger set for it and for in one go for all the ledgers uh, in the ledger set, Reporting can be done or various tasks can be performed. So this is what ledger sets are used for. Basically, it is helpful in combining various number of ledgers like I have created one primary ledger and I have created one secondary ledger, but I cannot group them here. Why? Because they do not share same calendar. If they will share char same charts of accounts calendar or period type, then I can create a ledger set here. So like I have created uh, PL and then I will like I have created uh, a secondary ledger with the same charts of account and calendar then I can link both the ledgers here in ledger sets for usage but right now it is not possible because I have used uh, different calendars in my primary region secondary ledger that's why I'm showing the already created one here and so this is what is ledger set is so basically we have seen how you can create a secondary ledger and what are the steps in it and then we have also discussed in short what is a ledger set and how what is the purpose of the ledger set is basically so this was all for today thanks for watching